Hi guys. So that one time that I proved my computer science professor wrong. Now this was my first semester as a computer science student specifically. And it's actually been a while. This was back in 2008 and it was at University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, and it doesn't really matter who the professor is, I guess. I don't, I'd rather not kind of make it public just because it's not really an issue. It, it's something that he recognized. But I'm going to explain what happened. And you might find it interesting, but I want you guys to try to figure out the answer. Um, so you you programmers out there, you guys who like to watch my calculator programming videos, this one's for you. You better know the answer. So he taught a class, and it was about binary trees. Now, it's probably hard for you to see, but as you can see here, um, I have a list of numbers here at the top. And then I ask, where is the number 17? Okay, so this is stored in the computer, this list. And I want to search the list to see if the number 17 is in the list. So how do I do that really fast way? Well, the way I can do it is I can sort of look for this, the middle number and see if it's greater or less than it, right? If the middle number is 34, well, 17 is less than 34, then all I have to do is search this, this half to see if it's there. And so then I do that again. I take that half and then I search the middle number, which is eight, and 17 is bigger than eight. So then I search through, you know, 14 and 27, and I just kind of pick one of those two. And eventually I find out, well, no, 17 is not in the list. So I get down to my last number, number 14, and 17 is not in that list. Now, this little formula right here, big O of log n, okay? So log base 2 of n is, is finding out how many times do you have to multiply 2 by itself to get to the number n. So if you take log base 2 of like 128, a, f a fast way to do that is to multiply 2 by itself and count on your fingers, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, so then you, so I got seven. Okay, so that's how many times you multiply two by itself. And it doesn't really matter that it's two. What really matters is that it's a log function. So even if you're multiplying 10 by itself, the point is, is that the number, um, is if you plot it, it's really, it's like the opposite of an exponential graph. It's like, it takes a really big number and it maps down to like a really small number, a number that keeps multiplying by some constants, whether it's 2 or whether it's 10 or something like that. And so a big O is, if you don't already know this already, this is the notation um, big O and then what's in the parentheses is going to give you a formula that when you give it n, which is how big your problem is, so if I have n numbers that I'm searching through, right? So if I have 20 numbers, then my n would be 20, okay? And then my log n would be whatever log of 20 is, which is like, let's say, 2, 4, 8, 16. It's about 4, 5. You, could, you might say 6 if you, if you start at 1 or something. It's, well, f so 4... A little, I think it's a little more than 4 and a little less than 5. So would be log of 20. So point is, is that you could have a very big list, but you can search through it very quickly. Now he was teaching a class on binary trees. So you could store things, not even just as lists, but as trees themselves, where it's linked to, to split in half, and then that splits in half, and then that splits in half. Um, and point is is when it really comes down to it the height of the tree is log of n where n is the number of kind of leaves or things in the tree like the they're called nodes or vertexes depending on what you know uh, math background you're you're talking about um 
so he te he teaches this class, but he he focuses a lot on log n. He just kind of like comes to the conclusion that anytime it seemed like the way he taught it was anytime you ever come across any of these binary trees, the answer is like it's log n. Okay. And I mean, I it was a kind of relaxed class. Um, but he, we took a quiz, and I just felt something was wrong on this quiz. So we, we came across this question, and it was, you have a binary tree of pennies, okay? Now, the way you add the pennies is you have this big tree, and I just drew like part of it here, and I did a dot, 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 because you don't know how big it is. But the point is, is that you add, and then you, you add two groups of pennies, additions and then each of those additions is a group of additions but eventually you come down to the point where you have this big row um, of pennies at the bottom so like your row could just be like two pennies total or it could be four pennies total or it could be like eight pennies total it could be i think we were assuming that it was the tree just came down and it was like flat at the bottom like all the the branches were the same height this came down to the same level and the question on the quiz was uh, multiple choice. And I think it was A, B, C, D, where it was something like these answers. But one, I'm not going to tell you which, which answers could be swapped out. But it could have been that one of those, those answers was, was swapped out with, with this, potentially. I'm not really sure, because I don't really remember the quiz precisely. But... If you notice here, um, we have that we do have the log n in here. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Okay, the question. Now, I wrote down the answers, but I didn't really write down the question. The question was, how many times do you have to add? How many add operations do you have to do to add all the pennies? in a tree with n pennies that was that was the question okay it was how many times do you have to add the pennies in a tree with n pennies i'm pretty sure that was the question that that has to be like equivalent to the question because i remember specifically what what the answer was what the correct answer was and what the answer he thought it was what was so go ahead and, and pause the video and try to guess what you think the correct answer is, okay? And pause and pause. Okay, so what did you guys think it was? Did you think it was A, B, C, or D? How many times do you have to add total to add up all the pennies in a binary tree and and keep in mind this this we're assuming that you do have to add each individual thing it's it's like the pennies could be individual numbers you can't skip any of the ads you actually have to process all of them okay now i went up in middle of the quiz we didn't even finish the quiz we didn't even talk about the quiz nothing i went up in middle of the quiz we weren't supposed to talk we weren't supposed to cheat anything i went up to the front of the class and i told the professor this is what i told him i didn't even know what he thought the correct answer was but i told him professor you think the answer is c but the correct answer is b that's what i told him nobody that's all i said and he was just like excuse me like he i think i don't remember if he was like offended or what but i that's what that's like what i told him and he was like no it's no it's not and he he just he just told me the answer he just argued with me he said no it is this one what are you talking about no he's like i can't and i told you the answer so after class we're all leaving. I went up to him and I said, no, no, it is this, 
this is the answer. And I think another student actually came up and he looked at it and he actually agreed with the, with the professor. He's just like, no, what are you talking about? It's, we just learned it, duh. Don't you get binary trees? It's always log n. Well, we had another lecture. I think this was a Thursday. So we had another lecture, I think the next Tuesday or something. And he comes up and he starts teaching us and he gives us a lecture and he says, hey guys, Tim was right. And he pulls up a simulation. I, I'm not even kidding. He ran some kind of, I don't know if they really used Python back in 2008 this much. Um, maybe he used like Java or something. I don't remember what language it was, but he had run like a little simulation where he, you, you know, he had, you know, made a function or something just to add up how many pennies or how many additions it would be, and he he was like testing it with like numerical tests, and he said, "Well, he, Tim was right. It it I tested it and everything, and it comes out to be <laughs> to be linear. It came out to be um big O." I had it upside down. It came out to be big O of N. So what's the deal here? Because it, so if you if you look at this, just just imagine for a second, because this is what I did on the quiz. This is all I did on the quiz. I just tested something very, very simple and I understood what was happening. I added two pennies and I was like how many times do you have to add two pennies once how many times do you have to add four pennies well you have to add two and two and then you have to add that again so it's three which is four minus one and then if you add seven pennies if you think about it or eight sorry eight pennies if you think about it you'll realize you need to add seven times so why is it always n minus 1? Well, n minus 1, if that's really what it, what the answer is, that's the same as big O, big O of n, because you ignore the 1, because it's just, a, it's like a, an efficiency formula. You forget about adding 1 to it. That doesn't matter. But the point is, is that it's just n. It's not log of n. And... Um, and if you think about it, if n is the number of pennies, well, what is what are the number of additions that you're doing? The number of additions that you're doing total is not the, the height of the tree. That's if you were searching. If you were looking for one penny and you had to search left, right, left, right, where is it in the tree? Okay, that would be log of n but we're counting the total number of additions, okay? So, and he might have, it might have been the case. I could be wrong. Um, there's a chance that it was, he thought it was n log n, if I remember it wrong. But, and that, that comes up too. So I'm just gonna explain n log n, that comes up in like sorting, because when you want to sort numbers, um, it usually takes n log n when you have to compare. Because you have to split what you're sorting into groups of two, and then split each of those into groups of two. And eventually, when, when you combine them all back together, you have to go through each of those list segments, um, which, which takes n amount of time but then you have to do it sort of log n levels. So you have to do that entire thing log n times. So it's kind of like the, they, you multiply them together. Um, but yeah, the answer was just linear. It was just big O of n, that's called linear. And it's fun, I just thought it was funny because I could deduce what he thought his answer, he thought the answer was on the, for the quiz that he made just based on his lecture just based on the way he taught I was able to figure that out and um, 
yeah. It it kind of bothered me, not because in in it, it wasn't that I was just like, oh yeah, okay, everything's okay. He just admits is wrong and everything's okay, and it it wasn't a personal thing f against him per se. It it was more something kind of got me kind of disturbed to me um kind of for a deeper reason and and i felt like i felt like i came across this too often in my life where i i had to rely on my intuition and if i just trusted people and just did what i was supposed to do then like my life would be a lie but but then sometimes i have this instinct in this intuition and i i'm like wait like usually i don't speak out but then this other person did speak out and people just believed them and so <laughs> the reason why i made this video in the first place was i was watching a video by three blue one brown is that it yeah, three blue, one brown. He's doing his lockdown math series, and he did, I think, episode four. And there he 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 comes up with an answer. He thinks it's correct, and then he has people tweet and say, "Hey, the he had two people tweet, and in the first one she said, I think it was a she. I don't know. Um, had like." a correct answer that he didn't understand and he looked at it and he's like i don't know what you're talking about but it actually disproved it, it proved that his answer was was wrong and then someone else came up with something that was a reverse proof and his was actually wrong like it was it the 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 converse was true but he was actually wrong and what three blue one brown did was when he looked at it he said oh i get yours yeah so i i was right he finishes out the lecture, and I kid you not, there's some people in the YouTube comments saying like, "Oh man, you, you didn't under she, she, they were right." So I was like, "Okay, this this is good because people caught it." But actually, he caught it then at the end because people were tweeting him, and he, he finally realized at the very end of the video that his original question that he thought might have a mistake and then he thought didn't have a mistake, it actually did have a mistake after all and it, it got sort of cleared up and that totally reminded me of, of this quiz and um and it, i think he might even like hearing about you know hearing about the the story that i had and just to add to this as kind of a positive thing when i went and i've had issues finally it took a long time before i had issues at the other university so Years, years later, I went to University of, of Illinois in Urbana, which is kind of a different campus, different school. Um, but it was a lot easier. It was a lot. The, the professors seemed more competent there. Um, that's the way I felt about it, at least for a good like five or six years. I did get frustrated after a long time, after a while, and, and, and ran into some issues after a long time but i did love being there i absolutely was just like this is awesome i actually really enjoyed like the the four five years that i was there studying uh, mathematics and computer science at, at the other campus and you know nothing against you know i know I, times are changing too and and Curriculums are getting better sometimes, depending on what's going on with the economy and things like that. But yeah, um, it opened my eyes when this happened because this was before you know YouTube and all these things. Facebook was like this popular of a thing, and I the way you viewed the world at that age in that technology. Um, generation it, it, it was kind of limited and it, it i put a lot of faith in the world and how, how i thought things should be and and how i thought how i expected things to be and a lot of times i was 
disappointed in a way that I wasn't happy to be disappointed. <laughs> so um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So <laughs> uh, that's my story of when I when I proved my computer science professor wrong at University of Illinois at Chicago in 2008 on a quiz, which. We were in middle of taking, and I just guessed what I thought he would think the correct answer was. So, um, and I think he graded it at the end of the class too, and said that his answer was right. Like everyone like graded it as, so he had to go backtrack and be like, yeah, and either give him free credit or something. I forgot what happened, but he. I think he even graded everyone saying like, well, if you put linear, you're wrong. Uh, I should tell you guys about, I wish I had the replay. I don't know if I have the replay, but I should tell you, I should show you guys the StarCraft game that I played a long time ago where my teammates quit, but I still won. Um, that's a, also an interesting situation that happened. So... Um, yep, it's just another video, and I hope you guys found it interesting. I'll see you guys later. Bye.